Uh, we have worked uh, with Berlin authorities uh, for a few months. The Berlin authorities ex expressed the wish of uh, being the house of the Document Foundation because they feel that Berlin uh, is increasingly uh, a city with several uh, uh, open source projects. The problem that we had originally was that we wanted to have a foundation where members were able to uh, be uh, in, in control of the foundation, in control of the governance. The uh, European laws about foundation made it a little bit difficult, so we had to work out this specific problem with Berlin authorities, and we have found uh, uh, a way of uh, having both a foundation, so to have a, what is called in Germany a Stiftung in terms of uh, governance, but a Stiftung where uh, members are recognized and are able to uh, express their wish uh, by electing the board of directors, by electing the other bodies of the foundation. Uh, of course, we are not uh, disrupting the model, it's just uh, we have adapted the model to the bylaws of the Document Foundation. We have changed slightly the bylaws, but the Berlin authorities has, have been uh, very open in accepting uh, a different model from the past uh, and a model that is more suited for uh, to, to free software uh, uh, communities. No, the model is absolutely the same. Mm -hmm. What has changed uh, and has changed a little bit are the numbers. Uh, for instance, we initially wanted to have a board of directors of nine people and we went down to seven. Uh, this just because the uh, ratio between uh, the board of directors and members is more acceptable for uh, the authorities. Uh, in the future, we don't uh, exclude the possibility of growing, going up to nine, but at the moment uh, there are seven directors and uh, three deputies. And the membership committee, which is uh, a very important body of the foundation, has five members and two deputies. The membership committee is, ve is, very imp is key because uh, is the committee that uh, approves memberships applications. So of course uh, uh, it has a key role in growing the foundation. We have all the rules on the, on the website, but in gen generally speaking, uh, who is already contributing and is already known in the community has really no problem in becoming a member. He has just to apply, there is a formality, he has to send an email to the membership committee and uh, uh, it has to provide a few information, but let's say that for people that is already working inside the community, uh, this information is a pure formality. It's just to say, you know, I'm active on Poodle for localization or I have committed some uh, patches or some, uh, fixed some bugs, so you find my name on Bugzilla. And this is enough because the membership committee is, is looking into these domains to check. Of course, if you've done uh, less visible stuff, then you have to provide uh, more evidence of what you've done especially if you've done uh, stuff at local level, uh, that we, we need some evidence. The problem is that it's not that we don't want members, it's that we want to have a community of real contributors, so members have to be contributors. Uh, having members just for the sake of having members doesn't mean anything, because the, the community is stable if people is contributing. Uh, and this is uh, something that comes from our previous experience where you had member contributing on a stable basis and you had member contributing uh, on a very or total random basis and uh, then uh, uh, it's almost impossible in this case to build uh, a path for the future because you need people that tells you you know in three months I will be doing this and then you have to be almost sure, they are volunteers of course, but you have to be almost sure that in three months they will be doing what they are promised. Uh, the, 
just being there for the sake of having a, a kind of a, a LibreOffice address or a, a Document Foundation address is not our case. We don't want that kind of guys that want to have just an email address and say, I'm proud of being a member of the community. Uh, they can be member of the community anyway. Uh, they can show a sticker on their laptop if they want. But uh, being members means uh, becoming being contributors. We have the stats, but I would prefer not to uh, not to talk about this. We have uh, we have commented so many times uh, uh, about why we think that the uh, that the choice of the Apache license is not a good choice. Uh, the problem is that the, uh, the the Apache Foundation is respected. We respect the Apache Foundation a lot. Uh, and uh, the problem is not the Apache license per se, is the Apache license uh, applied to a product like uh, uh, OpenOffice because uh, uh, the uh, integralism, we can say, of the Apache license, so the fact that you cannot uh, accept uh, uh, copyleft software or copyleft code inside the Apache license projects. Uh, is a strong limitation uh, if you look at a software like OpenOffice because you have uh, many modules who are GPL or uh, they use a Mozilla public license and uh, these are key modules sometimes in, the, in, in a software like an end user software. For instance, the more, let's say one of the most trivial, trivial examples are fonts. Many fonts are not licensed with a permissive license. I would say that most fonts are not licensed with a permissive license. And uh, so uh, you cannot embed those fonts uh, into the binaries. Uh, while users, and uh, with users I mean uh, uh, an office productivity suite users, uh, they are usually basic users. They don't know how to install form fonts on their system you have to provide the fonts embedded into the, uh, the software and not providing many fonts or providing only the fonts who are licensed with a permissive license is a huge limitation and uh, this is just let's say is the easiest example but there are other pieces of technology which are more technological than fonts that provide a similar lim limitation and in many cases rebuilding uh, a library or a module just for the sake of not having it with a copyleft license in our opinion is a huge loss of time and uh, it doesn't just make sense it doesn't just make sense so it's uh, the problem is not Apache Software Foundation is not the Apache license is the Apache license applied to OpenOffice.org If they've already been uh, contributing to OpenOffice, the, the switch or the collaboration is extremely easy. We use the same system, so we use a Poodle system, a Poodle server, and uh, we use many of the strings that were used for OpenOffice. Of course, we have added our own strings because we have added menus <coughs> and uh, <coughs> windows, but uh, most of the previous translation is going to work. And adding the few strings that are missing, it's uh, just uh, a few days of work. It's very easy. The community is extremely welcoming. So if you have a problem, you just uh, uh, write an email on the localization mailing list and you will find someone uh, who is able to help you or to give you uh, hints on where uh, to go to become uh, uh, immediately a contributor because people that were contributing to open office can become contributors in a matter really of hours so it's not anything complicated of course if you start from scratch you may not know Google you may not know how to localize but for instance if I look at the Italian project uh, which of course I follow more closely because I'm Italian uh, we have uh, we have got uh, something like seven, eight 
new localizers in the last few months just because uh, they've started writing an email and the two leaders of the localization have been so quick in answering that people have felt at home. And uh, that is, I think, the most uh, significant achievement. The fact that you don't have to go through someone in a corporation to become uh, a member of the, to be recognized as a member of the project. The project is recognizing member immediately. There's no one like a community manager that tells you now you are a member of the community. You become a member of the community by doing, which is the most exciting thing for a free software project. Uh, we are actually uh, showing, uh, Michael Mix has showed yesterday, a compilation of LibreOffice on an Android tablet. Uh, it is a compilation, the interface is missing, so this means that the software runs on an Android tablet as it runs on a PC today. Uh, the uh, interface, which is a touch interface, has not been done. So we're still missing a part of the, uh, of the entire uh, software, but we have done uh, most of it because the software compiles and runs. Uh, we plan to work on the interface uh, shortly, so our plans were to release a product at the end of 2012 or in early 2013. I would not change those dates just to be safe, but I think that we might be ready for the next LibreOffice conference which is going to be in uh, September-October time frame, so before the end of the year, with a product actually released. But let's say that, to be safe, we say end of 2012, early 2013. There we will be on Android and we will be on uh, iOS uh, immediately after. Of course we are looking at the user interface uh, with a lot of attention, we have a group of people working on that. The issue on that side is that in order to change the user interface uh, you have to make the software more modern, is what we are doing at the moment. So it's not just a question of applying a new user interface is a question of uh, changing graphic library behind, uh, of uh, making uh, the user interface more integrated with the, uh, with the uh, software. For instance, the, it looks like the API doesn't allow to have the lower bar with information, and of course you need to develop APIs that allow you to put this kind of information, like for instance, number of characters. We have now the number of characters, but it is on a separate windows because it is impossible to provide this information on the lower bar. So of, before uh, changing the look of LibreOffice, we need to add some features, we need to clean some more uh, libraries, we need to change some more libraries. It is something that we are doing. It will, we will continue to work on that but I, I don't think we can anticipate when the interface is going to change. Uh, we will probably change the interface with version number four, which uh, is still not on the release schedule. Uh, so it's going to be in early or in mid-2013. But we don't want to do something just for the sake of doing something. We want to, when, when we change the interface, LibreOffice will become a different product. Not, the interface is not enough. You have to add features and you have to make the interface uh, different. Of course, the work that we are going to do on Android will help the change in the interface because uh, although it's not going to be a touch interface on a PC, but, but you have to make it more natural as an interface, and therefore the work you do for Android or for tablets will help in uh, improving the interface. But before you can apply that to a PC interface, it will take time.
unfortunately we come from uh, and ten the ten previous years were completely static in terms of interface and you cannot change the interface in, in, in one year after ten years of being of standing still on the interface. It takes some time.